Hello everyone. A very good evening to all of you watching this event live today. Uh, I'm Srisha, Director of Education at SSVM Institutions. And this is a series of special episodes of SSVM EduTalk in collaboration with uh, Chennai and FC. And today we have two outstanding professional footballers with us. Um, first one is Enes Sipovic. Hi. And, and we have Anirudh Tapa. Hello, Anirudh. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? So both are from Chennai and FC. And thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to introduce uh, CFC's most iconic defender and uh, uh, mid midfielder uh, to our audience. So first, to begin with Enes Sipovic. Um, he is the first footballer from uh, Bosnia to play in the Indian Super League and one of the tallest ever players to feature in India. Uh, Sipovic stands at a towering 6 feet 6 inches uh, and signed for Chennai FC. So a gritty central defender who is also uh, good on the ball. Sipovic is an amiable, amiable personality off the field that we can see today with his jovial attitude and humble background. Um, he has played in different leagues around the world, a well-traveled professional, we must say, and who has been featured in Romania, Belgium, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar before arriving in India. That's wonderful, Ines. Thank you for joining us. And, nice <laughs> and to move on to Anirudh Tapa, he's just 22 years, can you believe? And he is a seasoned professional for club and country with over 100 appearances already. So he's an energetic midfielder with composure on and off the ball. And Tapa has won the ISL title with Chennai FC in the 2017-18 campaign as well. So hailing from Dehradun and a product of the AIFF Elite Academy, uh, Tapa has come through the ranks of CFC uh, making his debut in 2016. So his consistent rise has been acknowledged in the form of two AIFF Emerging uh, Player of the Year awards uh, in the last four years. And his leadership potential has also been recognized with uh, uh, Tapa being given the responsibility of vice captain. So highly rated by his peers, coaches, we are certain the fleet-footed uh, midfield Mastro Tapa has a long and successful career ahead of him. So once again, it's wonderful having you both here. And I, as well as our audience, are super excited to know more about both of your experiences. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. You're very welcome. So, shall we begin with the first question? <laughs> so, um, my first question would actually be for both of you. Um, Anirudh and Enes, um, could you kindly share your first ever experience or memory with a football? Uh, let's start with Anirudh. <laughs> When I the jersey of my school team, which was for everyone, it was a half sleeve jersey for me, it was full sleeve, same with the shots and running around the field, uh, playing with my brother, the like senior players. And that was my very first moment I remember when I started playing football. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, Anirudh, uh, how did your parents support you through your uh, journey? Yeah, they were fully supported uh, because, you know, my pa my father, he was a sportsman. He used to play football when he was young. Then my brother, he used to play for his school team. And after him, my parents just, you know, supported me and gave me an opportunity to play football in the school. It's amazing. 
It's wonderful. So Enes, we'd love to hear from you uh, on uh, you know your first experience or memory with uh, a football. Uh, my first time, my first touch with football was uh, 1996 after the war has been finished in Bosnia. Unfortunately, my childhood was very, very bad and I played with uh, guns and bullets. And first touch with the ball was uh, 1996. My father take me to the first game of our lovely club in Bosnia, our first love, FK Zelezinčar. And over there, first time uh, I saw the stadium and I saw football players and the fields and it was a pretty nice uh, atmosphere. Oh, wonderful. And before that, you were mentioning that you had experience with guns and bullets. So uh, how was that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, in Bosnia, I believe uh, every kid know to control uh, guns. <laughs> so it's not, no strange for us. It's no strange thing for us. My first toy was, uh, honestly, it was uh, AK-47 Kalashnikov, big, big gun. <laughs> wow. Tapa, I think you should be careful sitting next to him right now. <laughs> Ooh, I have my back. I have my back. German Pete is there for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to hear from you both. So, um, let's move on to Anirudh. Um, Anirudh, what helped in your decision to pursue professional football as a career? Uh, I think it was my parents. You know, I just played football as a hobby. I liked it. Uh, it was my fun time. I just whatever whenever I was stressed or whatever. The first thing came to my mind to do was play football and I got an opportunity, you know, to move out of the city, leave my parents where I can play as well as I can study. So I had an opportunity to go to Chandigarh and do both the things. But to be honest, I was not ready at the age of 10, 11, I was not ready to leave home. But you know, my parents, they were supportive. I think they knew that he would do better in football because they saw me playing at a very young age mm -hmm. and people around me were really supportive. So I think that was the turning moment when my parents supported me and put me in the hostel. Wow, that was no small feat, <laughs> looks like. <laughs> That's wonderful. So Ennis, uh, could you share your greatest obstacle uh, maybe you had to overcome to become a pro footballer? Uh, like I said, beginning was tough uh, for me, like like a child, uh, getting out from the war, the beginning was tough, tough. but uh, I, I I think the first time when I had to leave my family with 18 years, when I signed my uh, second professional contract with Romanian club, mm -hmm. uh, that was a really, really tough period for me, that I had to leave my family and to, to go in one amazing adventure and alone. I have been alone all the time. Wow, how did you manage that without, uh, uh, you know, anyone and having an experience alone? In the beginning it was tough, but uh, I, I like to, like you see, I like to speak too much. And uh, every time I've been with my colleagues and I start to learn a Romanian language and like that, I, it was more easier to communicate with people and, and they really appreciate my effort. Uh, to learn uh, Romanian language and first three months was really, really tough, but after everything was okay. Oh, that's great. So now you speak fluently in Romanian? I, I speak like uh, five or six languages very well and uh, maybe two, three languages with a few problems, but I can communicate with a uh, lot of languages. Oh, that's a great talent to have. I'm sure all of our students are, uh, you know, going to be very inquisitive to learn more languages like you. And um, I'm sure you're going to pick up Tamil very soon as well, since you've joined Chennai team. Yes, as many supporters, they are uh, force me to, to speak in Tamil. And I am lucky to have here uh, Edwin and he, he give me a few advices and he give me a few messages and when I put some pictures on my social media, <laughs> I use some language. <laughs> I hope uh, people from Chennai appreciate that. That's very kind of you. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> so, uh, Ani Ruth, uh, many young sports enthusiasts and, enthusiasts and uh, serious players abstain the rest is from playing professionally so why do you think this happens uh, i think like obviously you know it is difficult to pursue something 
uh, whether it's football or even whatever they want to do but you know to be there you need to obviously work hard but to stay there that is more difficult you know to stay at the top level that is something you need to you know have the patience and you need to be mentally strong mm-hmm. because obviously when you reach at the very best people just lose their focus and <clears throat> they uh, they don't concentrate much on what and how they have reached at that level so i think that is the main uh, problem with most of the footballers that you know they can't stay there at the very best for a longer period they just uh, reach the top and they like they just touch and they come down so that's the main thing that consistency should be there mm-hmm. so uh, do you think um, there is a lot of like i'm sure you would have gone through these challenges as well so how did what was your challenge uh, in the beginning uh, while you were uh, you know, while you were entering uh, the clubs so when i you know signed with chennai fc there were very few players who were young who were at like my age they were most of them were seniors so they helped me a lot to you know understand how we need to stay here what we need to do to perform 100% every day day in day out they were the ones you know who supported me because obviously i was not playing in 2016 i was not playing a single game i was just training and i was frustrated because you know as a player i want to be there i want to be on the pitch i want to play but i was not getting that opportunity right. and there were players who were much older than me and they were the ones who supported me they guided me you know to how to stay focused how to keep yourself mentally as well as physically fit and that that was the most important time for me you know to be in there in the team and stay motivated and waiting for my opportunity to come right that's wonderful thank you for sharing that anirudh and uh, enis uh, we have many aspiring sportsmen um, and sportswomen in our schools here uh, at ssvm and would you be able to um, share your experience on the training regimen um, you have undergone to become uh, a professional footballer okay uh, in bosnia my family we never think about professional football every time first first idea was the school finish uh, high school college find good job and to to earn some money for family but uh, even even when i start my uh, football steps uh, my first football steps is with 7 with 8 uh, i start to train uh, usually every day so my parents push me out from the street just to to train to not be at the street you know all focus was on school uh, i never dream to be football player i never dream about anything huge but i work for that you know i i believe that uh, people who dream they stay over there for too long and they lose the touch with the reality so to dream it's nice but not too much it's uh, it's very important that you put your Uh, hard work and uh, smart work over there uh, every day to learn something uh, it's very very important uh, in football uh, you ask tapa what's up and why how he stay over there in, in professional football a lot of sacrifice you know the, the most important thing is to sacrifice some things for football you know many times we go to sleep at 10 o'clock and our friends call us let's go out to <laughs> to have fun to have a party you know but you know tomorrow you have the training and you must be over there 100% uh, ready for uh, for training so you cannot you cannot avoid yourself to to be even 1% down of of your effort so usual uh, i train a lot i, I take care uh, when i start uh, i take a lot of individual tra- individual trainings uh honestly in my generation there was a lot of better players than me, me i mean uh, people were speaking more about another players because they was more talented mm-hmm. but i believe talent help you only 10% in professional football and uh, rest is uh, hard work and uh, 
learning things from all, all, all people around football. So, so this is the most important, uh, important. You have to sacrifice some, some things, you have to work hard and, and to don't think about uh, everything will come to you. Wow, that's so very true. And uh, I think that was really, really insightful because um, every sportsman, I think this is a big challenge because we lose out a lot in our early years um, uh, in the lives because we have to sacrifice so many things. We cannot be around friends uh, much and we have to do that so we can actually be happy um, uh, long term uh, and have that sense of satisfaction and achievement, I believe. And that's something uh, you both are having right now, being uh, young achievers already in your uh, such a young age. So that's wonderful. And also, like you said, uh, just dreaming doesn't uh, matter, but uh, the amount of hard work you put in really, really matters. So thank you so much for that valuable message, Ennis. And um, so before we, uh, you know, continue with the next questions, I thought it might be uh, very interesting to your fans if you could share a fun fact about yourselves that you have never shared before. Share one fun fact from here or from uh, career? Just a fun fact about yourselves that nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're catching up. Uh, I don't know. The funny, funny thing was when I've been in Romania and I didn't understand the Romanian language. And this, this is gonna sound rude. You know, when I come first time over there and I want to be first, you know, to to show yourself you are ready to be over there, and I run every time first. And they said always, I hear two words. Uh, like they said, Ushur Kavle, Ushur Kavle. That's me. Unfortunately, in the beginning, I didn't uh, understand the meaning of these words. <laughs> but they said, like, uh, easy horse, easy. <laughs> Don't run first. So that was funny in the beginning because I didn't understand. And I was thinking, oh, they, they are, they are uh, happy with me. They want me to push. <laughs> but in the, I didn't understand. They want me to pick out. <laughs> That's really cool. So, Anirudh, could you share your fun fact? My fun fact was, uh, like, we shouldn't eat the, you know, junk food because it is very unhealthy for us. Mm -hmm. But uh, our media team today, they bribed me with blue lace, <laughs> which is my favorite. They gave me that and, you know, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't eat that. But they called me and they said that, you know what, come fast, we have lace for you. Rather than telling me that, come, we have a live session, <laughs> they called me and they, you know, just put me here. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> so thank you anyways uh, for joining us. And so Anirudh, would you, who would you say is your um, favorite football player and um, which is your favorite team? When I grew up watching football, my favorite player was Ronaldinho because of the magic he had on his feet. Obviously, I don't have one percent of it, but still, I love watching him. Uh, then my favorite team is Manchester United. I follow them. Obviously, they are not in a good form, but but still, I follow them. Wow. I hate Man United. <laughs> <laughs> well, two contrary opinions there. Uh, so, uh, Anirudh, and you were, you were mentioning that you were in hostel as well. So, h how did you get to watch, uh, you know, your favorite players and your favorite team uh, playing? How did you get updated? No. Difficult, you know, uh, very, very difficult. I never watched football, only a few times when we need to be. I remember we used to take permissions from our warden. Mm -hmm watch football matches but it was like once in a month or once in two months but obviously we had newspapers we used to you know read them and we had that sports column from there we, knew, we used to you know pick those pictures and in that in those times i remember we had this, this hobby of keeping a book register and we used to just you know cut those pictures and just take it and just every day we used to look at them and we used to be happy about it. Mm -hmm. Those were the times, you know, days 
we passed we had a book each player you know had a book and we just used to uh, take newspaper from library or from somewhere just to cut those pictures and just to keep our keep it in our books in our this uh, register Ah, oh, that's so nice. Now uh, we also have a residential school here at SSVM, and this reminds me of how our students also do that. Very similar to what you mentioned, <laughs> because their only source is either we give them, you know, uh, a watch time in the dormitory TVs, or uh, mostly they get updated through uh, news. Uh, so, like you said, we can see all the posters cut out and put up on the bulletin boards, and they have. uh you know they get information through that so it reminds me of that and thank you for sharing that and uh so you were also uh you, know, you i'm sure you entered you entered football uh in, at a very young age so i'm sure you'd have represented your school as well right so was there any um achievement that you would like to share with us um uh, with me it was like when i was in first grade I just passed my first grade, and we had, and we used to have this report cards of every class. And in that, my class teacher wrote that he will be the next David Beckham of our country. And I still have it, but you know, I it was the thing that I really loved about it. Obviously, that at that time I never thought that I would reach this level what I am today. But I was really happy and proud that my teacher. at that age she believed in me mm-hmm. and she showed that trust and you know that was a very special moment for me wow that's so beautiful right at your first grade a teacher has recognized your talent and you know here you are already so celebrated among um, everyone so that's amazing tapa and um, so it is uh, in your journey as a football player um you may have uh, come across many different uh, coaches and so how would you describe uh, the qualities of an excellent coach tough question <laughs> <laughs> no uh the best coach is the coach who let you play <laughs> <laughs> that's the best coach <laughs> i mean uh i had a lot of like you said a lot of coaches from many different countries all around the world from south america i don't know germany morocco algeria mm-hmm. saudi arabia many many good uh, coaches the best coach for me is the coach who take the best from you so when you when he give you advices that you you take good decisions in right you try in right moment uh, the coach who give you confidence uh, is the best coach uh, i mean when you have a professional football player and let's take uh, example uh, tapa is amazing talented player he he learn a lot of things he don't like coach you don't need to learn him how to kick the ball because he know that he he, he is very well he, you don't need to learn him how to dribble uh, what you have to to do like coach is to see with uh, which where he has a problem and to give him right advice to 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 give him solution not just to tell him look kick the ball like this or play over there no it's very important to to take the best from him and i believe it's very easy to be coach in professional football oh that's great and i'm sure we have our coaches watching here as well so they would take this valuable message <laughs> and um so anirudh what do you think what uh, uh how would you describe uh, the qualities of an excellent coach yeah as he said you know to take the best of of the player you know obviously everyone can say to kick the ball or to pass it here but you know when a player is not doing well or the player is, is making a mistake a uh, coach can guide him you know when he is low coach can guide him how he can you know rise up from there when he is out of form a coach can you know pull him up you know to stay at his very best because it's not an easy job to be a coach and i think it's one of the most difficult jobs to be a coach or to be a teacher you know to keep the best out of his students or as a, or the players and if the coach you no know, can guide his players uh, to the right direction it will be 
good for both of them uh, or for the coach and for the player just learning from the coach doesn't help me it helps the coach as well because he also you know need to have a vision how he can improve a player so i think we both can help each other just by learning and teaching Yeah, definitely. Like you said, I think it's beneficial both ways. Um, you'll be learning from each other, so that's great. Thank you, Anirudh uh, and Ines, for sharing this. And uh, Anirudh, I wanted to know: um, uh, do, do you feel um, there are many talents that go unrecognized um, because cricket uh, tends to dominate most of the sports culture in India? Um, and Anirudh, how do you think? we can promote football uh, at a school level i think there are many talented players you know i have seen many players who couldn't reach the very best of some of the other reason but you know to take best out of a child you need to have more extra curriculum activities not just studies whatever you can you know promote a child to do whether it's in sports or drawing or painting because you never know what the child has qualities he can be a better swimmer or he can play good table tennis or he might be a good painter so you never know what he is capable of so i think every school should have you know more of these curriculum activities where a child can you know pursue his passion he could find his love for the for his you know life whatever he can do whatever he will love he will obviously find and he will do that and that's what i think school is about that is the most important thing i think what school can provide exactly so they should be able to provide so many different uh, platforms for them to experience all these uh, activities and then find their passion from that like you said so thank you for that and uh, anirudh also like why do you uh, 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 think many underprivileged uh, indians are finding it challenging to get into the uh, sports field because you know in india i think cricket is one of the most important sports and after that they are just you know they are very below whether you talk about cricket badminton Oh, uh, sorry. Football, badminton, kabaddi, whatever sport it is. You know, we don't have much opportunity in these kind of sports. I think every you know society or every you know uh, locality should have these community or teams where you know every child, underprivileged child, can go and just practice whatever sports they could provide, so that you know a child can learn and have fun. and he could just learn things out of the these you know sports because if we can provide if these local societies can provide much sports facilities an underprivileged child can be a better person in life because sports is one of those things where you just you don't need any money out of it you just need a platform to show your talent and rest you know it's up to you how you can perform and how you well you can grab the opportunity right thank you for that that was wonderful uh so enis um uh, it would be wonderful if you could um share how indian football teams can um you know match up to the european uh football leagues um what steps do you think the football uh league here in india can take i will i will uh, take uh, one part of uh, papa's question he said it's very important that every community here in india or every school has a has a field ground where the kids can come for free to to play uh, football like this uh, it's very easy to promote uh, any sport when it's very free you know it's very difficult in bosnia also we have a lot of problems you know uh, i say our government they build the stadiums but when let's say my kid is going to go to play you have to pay so for me this is this is not helping for promotion in any of sports what is the difference between indian and uh, european football 
I, I, I don't know. Okay, in Europe it's more tactically over there. Big, uh, clubs and teams work work a lot of uh, tactically, but here what I saw uh, the mentality of Indian football player it's amazing. The work ethic is so on a high level, and honestly, in all all this country where I have been playing, me it's it's uh, work ethic it's on level with Belgium. The guys here uh, daily they are uh, take care of the, of uh, their own and uh, they are working. Uh, individually and uh, on the field uh, it's it's really really amazing wow that's amazing that's a great insight for all of us here definitely in india so uh, ns do you also uh, do you think there is an age profile that uh, determines an aspirant's chances of success in football no, no for me for me age age are just a number <laughs> uh, i even don't celebrate my my birthday because I, I, I stopped to counting my age, you know, I, I don't care anymore. Uh, Napa said uh, 2016 he, he didn't play because maybe they said he's too young, uh, he has to work. I, I, I don't believe in, believe in this. If somebody is good, uh, doesn't matter if he is uh, 18 or uh, 35 years old, he should play. So age, age are just a number. Uh, your performance, performance on the field, speaking about you, not age. Right, that's that's very true, and uh, I think Ta- Tapa is a uh, you know an example here for all of us, because right in a, a very young age, he's um, already uh, he's the nation's um, one of the most successful uh, footballers as well. So. Um, Tapa, what what is your experience like being so young and being among uh, uh, you know you might have experienced a lot of experienced uh, footballers around you and you also said you've learned from them but what what are some of the challenges you faced as being uh, young, the youngest person? Uh, challenges there were many challenges you know every step there is challenge every day it is a challenge you know for me. Not for me, for everyone, you know, to perform at the very best. Because if we don't perform, other player is waiting for their opportunity to come in and take it. But, you know, when I started in, I just wanted to learn. I just wanted to enjoy football. Because I love this game. From start, I knew that, you know, I was, from start, I'm, I'm playing this game. And I knew that if not football, then I don't know what I would be. So, every day, whenever I step on it, I just try and enjoy it. And whatever, whoever does well, you know, whoever, whether it's an Indian, whether it's a young player, old player, a foreigner, whatever he does, I just watch and admire it and try to implement it if I can. If not, I just try and do my stuff, whatever I can do best. But talking about challenge, I think every day is a challenge in sports because you need to perform your very best every day because, you know, there are many players waiting for their opportunity. Mm-hmm. And if I don't perform, they will take it. Very true. That's so well said. So, um, Tapa, uh, we also know that, you know, CFC is an amazing foot- football club and your fans all over Tamil Nadu are so crazy about you. So, where do you see yourself in the next decade? In Chennai only, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> They, obviously, they want me to marry a Tamil girl and Ooh. take her. You know, I think Edwin, I'll ask Edwin to help me <laughs> because he's the one who can. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, I love Chennai. I love the fans. Uh, I love this family. Whether we talk about the players, whether we talk about the staff, the city, or the fans, I love every bit about it. And I don't think right now of going anywhere else. So for now, I'm in Chennai only. This is my family now. Wow, that's so nice. That's so nice. We're all uh, so happy you think of uh, the entire Tamil crowd as uh, uh, as your family and looks like someone has put that thought in your uh, head about marrying a Tamil girl. (laughs) So who was that? Honestly, you know, I, I never had it, but some of Someone from media, they told me like fans are, you know, messaging them uh, saying that now we need to find a Tamil girl for Thapa and a house for him to stay here. So, I don't know. So girls, Thapa is alone. You are welcome. 
<laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful but yeah he's still young he has a lot of time to explore <laughs> looks like so it's been it's just been wonderful you know talking to both of you it's it's so fun and uh, so one question that i would like to ask both of you um as we're moving almost to the end of this session is um you know anirudh then and is both of you you are very inspiring uh, sportsmen to many of the young aspiring footballers uh, here so do you have one message uh, that you could share for your young fans at ssvm you go first you go first how is it a message uh, like i said they 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 can dream they can dream but don't stay over there for long come back in reality and you know don't don't run uh, after i will say again after money you know some young kids they they have talented and they are looking only for uh, for uh, money to earn a lot of money uh, like very very young so i believe they have to to invest a lot of in themselves not like football player like like uh, students in the school they have to learn to to educate themselves education is the most important even for football player for everybody around the world i believe the most important thing is education educate yourself and uh, work uh, if you have talent doesn't mean like tapa said if you if you can uh, if you are a good artist or uh, you can swim good or you can run go after your talent believe yourself and uh, put lot of work and and believe yourself this is the most important thing and after that when you finish your day you will see where are you if you success and uh, for sure you will su- you will be successful when you put all these things together wow so beautifully said thank you uh, enes now let's hear from anirudh <laughs> i think everything he has said it but you know like he said educate yourself uh education will help you wherever you go but with education i think you know whatever you dream obviously he said you need to come out of it but if you have a dream you need to work hard for it you need to sacrifice because it's not easy to dream but if you have it you need to work hard but most importantly you need to educate yourself then only you know where you want to be where you can be and just keep working hard for it there will be people who will be pulling you down there will be people who will you know not believe in you but the most important thing at the end will be your hard work your sacrifice what you do for yourself to be at the very best so i think hard work is the key to success very true very true i cannot agree more on that so thank you so much both of you uh, uh, thank you for sharing your experiences so well and uh, i'm very sure Uh, you would have made our students um, excited for uh, their passion in sports and particularly football so with a growing number of fans for both of you not only from SSVM uh, but also from the whole of Tamil Nadu it's been a real uh, pliv- privilege to interact with both of you so thank you very much uh, for being with us here on our uh, special episode with uh, SSVM Medit Talk and We are waiting once the situation gets better with covid uh we'd love to host you in our campus as well once again so thank you very much for that thank you thank you for this opportunity to bring us back in the school for me the school is the best uh, the best ages i ever spent and i i want to tell all guys who are there who are watching us and they are in school enjoy enjoy your time in school this is the best age you you will ever have It's truly 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 valuable everything that you've shared um I think every child uh, every uh, uh, you know student listening to this or watching this episode will be able to uh, resonate with so thank you so much both of you and I just want to say at the end like I still miss the time at SSVM when I visited I really enjoyed the crowd you know the children they were really happy and they were just cheering so I really enjoyed it We totally Hello. missed that for the last one here we've been missing that so much uh, at our campuses so we hope the situation gets better soon <laughs> so we can again hear that crowd uh, cheering yeah. you know 
that would be wonderful so thank you thank you again uh, both of you thank you so much for joining us thank you